Wakanze Buffalo Sun will not be here today to teach us Lajaje Ia. Okhbong's Iko Wita passed away this afternoon. We meant a lot to her. Her love, her hugs, and knowledge will be missed. We are all family here, so let's show Okhbong some Okta, Wahoi, and support. And we will break for our lunch early to give Okhman some privacy. Naji. My Iko and Witsiko calling me home. I'm only here because you called. Everyone keeps saying that. Home. I don't understand. Home, um... Uh, well, that's why I'm here. I didn't finish telling you about our Wajaje people's first home. I have to, in order to tell you where I'm going, I have to tell you where we've been.
Taji people first as spirit beings who came down from the stars. In their humility, they called themselves the Little Ones. Each clan has their own version of this story. This is just one of them. The Little Ones decided they wanted to come to Earth to fulfill their destiny to become a people. With Wakanda's guidance, they searched the heavenly bodies for help and asked the four great gods for help. The little ones found Grandfather Sun and asked what Siko needed to help them descend to Earth. The Sun replied, Make me of your body when you become a person, and I will provide a path for you to follow in all four stages of your life so you may reach old age. So the little ones thanked Witsiko Mi for his blessing and then continued their journey to Grandmother Moon. The little ones found Grandmother Moon and asked Iko Miyongpa to help them descend to Earth. The moon replied, when you go below to Earth and become a people, I shall help you reach old age. So the little ones thanked me, Iko Miyongpa for the blessing and then continued their journey to the stars. The little ones traveled on to find grandfather morning star and grandmother evening star. Again, they asked for help to descend to Earth. The stars replied, when you go below to Earth and become a people, take us as your body. Make us life symbols and we shall help you reach old age. So the little ones thanked the stars for their blessing and continued their journey. The little ones found Honga Ahutong, the immature golden eagle. Again, they asked for help to descend to earth. Honga Ahudan replied, I will make a way and lead you below to become a people. They stretched out their wings, which were wider than the Milky Way. They soared downward four times, leading the little ones through the four divisions of heavenly bodies. The little ones stretched out their arms, like eagle wings and floated down to the stars. As they descended together in three groups, their spiritual bodies transformed into human bodies along the way. The little ones landed on top of seven red oak trees, shaking their acorns off upon landing. They saw that the earth was mostly covered in water. Knowing they couldn't exist on the water in human bodies, they asked Radiant Star, please help us find land. Radiant Star replied, Opa Donga, the great elk, will help you find land. Oh, 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 hey, that's like my name. Yes, we named you after the great elk because he is sacred and powerful, just like you. And you were born during a big flood. <laughs> a flood? Just wait for the story. Well, the great elk said to the little ones, because I'm sacred, I am never absent from any place or important movements. What does that mean? Wait for the story. The great elk then said, I will throw myself down on the waters four times. The elk threw himself down the first time and made a huge splash. The elk threw himself down the second time and the water started to disappear. The elk threw himself down for the third time and the water started to lower as signs of the land began to show. And finally, the elk threw him down, himself down for the fourth time and made the land appear. 
Plants and grasses grew from the great elk's hair left on the ground, which provided sustenance for the little ones in their new bodies. Different parts of his body became the earth's hills, mountaintops, rivers, streams, ridges, and cracks of the landscape. The great elk's body provided the land where all animals could live together in abundance and provide the little ones with the tools and food to live on earth. The great elk began to bugle loudly over the lands of the earth and all four winds. The great elk and the four winds breathed life onto earth, which is why we call him Mojongahe, Earth Maker. He he bugled toward the east, breathing life onto earth. He bugled to the north, breathing life onto earth. He bugled to the west, breathing life onto earth. He bugled to the south, breathing final life onto earth. And then he took one big breath of life and the world was made. That's amazing. I see what you mean now about the flood. <laughs> I feel cool to be named after the great elk. Yes, he's very important to us, and so are you. The little ones wandered the earth in three groups for a long time, looking for the original people of the earth. Along the way, they learned how to survive and found the sun's path and followed it as they were told. Finally, they found a river. In the middle of this wide river, they met a water spirit. This gentle spirit said, I can give you the knowledge of the water with all its uses and forces to help you reach old age. I will also gift the first group of little ones their name, Wajaje, which is my name. From now on, you'll be known as the water people, Wajaje. Then the water spirit turned to the second group. I will name you Shijo, people of the sky, she said. Then she turned to the third group. I will name you Hunka, people of the land. Each of you now represents the three elements of the universe, water, sky, and earth. With their new names, the little ones thank the water spirit for their blessing and continued on their journey across the land. By Wakanda's guidance, they found the original people of the earth, whom they called Hanka Utanatsi, isolated earth people. However, the isolated earth people were living in Ganida, a chaotic force that the little ones had never encountered before. The isolated earth people were powerless over Ganida. The little ones could see the order of the cosmos on earth where the isolated earth people could not. So the little ones invited the isolated earth people to follow the path of the sun's journey as they were instructed by Wakanda. Together they would create structure and balance on earth. The isolated earth people became part of the Hanka people. The Wajaje, the Tsijo, and the Hanka embraced the isolated earth people to become one people, the Neokanska, children of the middle waters. Together they formed families which led to large clans. They built villages. They organized their villages from all they had learned on their spiritual and earthly journeys. The villages reflected the order of the cosmos. In the middle of the village, there was a path from east to west to remind them of the sun's journey. The sky chief and the Siju were on the north side. The earth chief and the Hanka were on the south. They grew giant gardens full of squash, beans, and corn. We lived in both the woodland areas as well as on the great plains where we followed the life-giving buffalo. Their herds numbered in the millions as they thundered across the plains. The buffalo gave of themselves selflessly. They taught us how to use every part of their bodies for our own nourishment and even protection. We honored them as clan symbols because they honored us with their lives. 
The ancients built the mounds in Cahokia, where we found ourselves in the largest city on the continent at that time. After the Degiha split, the Wajaji followed the waterways to what is now Missouri, where our ancient ancestors left drawings and carvings in the rocks to share their knowledge with future generations. The ancients provided us a grounding that evolved into our clan ways. Different clans had different abilities or different purposes. One clan alone could not do everything. When all clans work together, we call that synergy. That synergy is what kept us working together. One of our homes in Missouri was called the place of many swans, which provided elements for our life ways. When the swans hug each other, their necks and heads form a heart. Yes, there were many, there were lots of beautiful swans that glide, glided gracefully on top of the smooth waters. We acquired many of the life symbols for our clans at the place of many swans. But when the Ishtahi wanted the place of many swans and all of our lands in Missouri for themselves, we left our home of so many generations to find a safer home near our Degiha relatives, the Kansa, in what is now Kansas. We lived there for only a short while and had difficulty hunting due to the Ishtahi driving game westward. So our leaders asked a great warrior named Wataika to scout out a new home for us just to the south in Indian territory. But he was concerned that the Ishtahi would kill him. So he said, I will turn myself into Shonketan, the wolf, so that they will not notice me. Wataika then turned himself into a wolf and scouted out the lands for our new home undetected by Ishtahe. When he returned, he described pools of bubbling black liquid coming out of the ground like black water, ni sape. Watainka said that this black water will be significant to our people in the future. It was around 150 years ago when we made our final move to our home in what became Oklahoma, where we now live. Someone else is calling my name now. Our ancestors are calling me home. All of our Wajaje people that I talked about in the story are all waiting for me. They want me to come home to our original home in the stars. Is that our real home? It's our original home, just as I described. Do you understand, sweetheart? I think so. You're going to the stars where all of our ancestors came from? Yes, and that's also where we will return, just like me. And me too? Yes, and you too. That's why you have your Wajaji name. It was given to you before you even arrived on Earth. That's how you will know when it's your time. The ancestors and I will call you by your name when it's time. But that's a long time from now. You have many important things to accomplish in your life first. Now it's time for me to go, but I have one more thing to tell you. They will be having a Kikonzi, Native American church meeting for my passing soon. I want you to go in there and find healing. Use the manka, medicine in there, and pray for our family and yourself to feel good again, for your heart to heal from the pain of my passing and continue to go in there because it will lead you on a good path through life's many journeys.
There's a symbolic road there called the Ojanke, which will lead you to a spiritual place where we'll be closer to Wakanda, closer to our ancestors, and closer to the answers you seek in this life. You'll be reminded of this road each day when you see Witsiko Mi's path across the sky from east to west. And when Iko Miyompa, Grandmother Moon, comes out at night, look up at the stars that surround her and remember where we came from.